guys, Rob up the gown here. I had planned on doing a wee video with the roof down, but you know, it's actually so windy today that it, they messed up the, the sound quite a bit, so I thought I'd put the roof up, pull in, and just have a wee chat with you here by the lay-by. Um, I recently did a video on the 10 things to look out for when buying a Boxster 987. Um, it's a common problem that you should be aware of, and I thought it's only fair that I should balance that out by today by giving you 10 reasons that I think you should buy a Boxster 987 right now. So let's start with number 10, let's go. So number 10 on my list is quite simply how the car looks. When you first look at a Porsche it's quite hard to, to not appreciate how it looks and that's probably the thing that drove you to it or, or was attracted you to it when you're a, a kid or even nowadays. You know you see a Porsche in the street, you see it sitting in front of you and you think wow this, this thing looks fantastic and I've got to say these cars look great in the photos and the videos, they look even better in the flesh when you're actually standing close to them, you get a different dimension to them. So I love the looks of the 987 uh, uh, Boxster, it kind of harks back to the 550 Spider and also the Lotus Elan a little bit, um, so Porsche took design cues from these two cars and I think you can still see that in the 987, um, after that I think design gets a wee bit more diluted, you know that said I think the 981 and the 718 are spectacular, beautiful looking cars in their own way. But to me, the 987, if you look at it closely and go around the angles, it's quite muscular, it's very curvy. Uh, the nose of the car is a wee bit like a 550 Spider. Um, the rear hunches of the car, again, they kind of flare out a little bit like the Spider. Um, and to me, it's just got the perfect balance of dimensions and looks. And I think it's like art, to be honest with you. When you're looking at these cars, I sometimes describe them as being automotive art. And that's how I feel about them. Because it kind of stirs you a little bit, you know. Um, when you see them, you just think how beautiful they are. So, number 10 on my list, absolutely, is looks. Number 9 on my list is price and value. Obviously, your budget's going to determine what type of car you can afford and what you're going to go for. I think the 987 Boxster is a, it has got unparalleled value. It really has. Um, you can buy one of these cars for under £10,000 right now, albeit a little bit of a higher mileage. But as long as that's been, you know, if it's got a good service history and good condition, then higher miles shouldn't be a problem. Um, to think you can get into one of these fantastic Porsches at such a low price point is, is ridiculous almost, you know. So it's, it makes it so attractive as a first Porsche proposition or as a second or third whatever car, whatever it is for you. Um, and as far as value goes, I mean, these cars shared most of their components with N11s. In fact, the first two thirds of this front of the car is pretty much identical to the, the 911 of the same era. Um, they changed, obviously, the rear engine configuration, uh, made the mid-engine and the Boxster. But even the engine's a, a detuned version of the 911. Um, so really, you're getting fantastic value when you buy a Boxster because of the shared components. Um, apart from that, you know, I think the Boxster 987 is quite undervalued in my opinion um, so I would say get one before the prices change because you never know when that could be so number nine price and unparalleled value I'd just like to add to that a lot of people comment it's like a bit of cliche well, there's no such thing as a cheap Porsche well I don't know if I agree with that um, I think there is such a thing as a cheap Porsche now let me explain if you buy a Porsche that's needing tons of work done and you buy it cheap but it's needing an engine rebuild or, or whatever, then it's not going to be a cheap Porsche. But if you buy a Porsche that's had most of the work done um, and you sell it for the price that you paid for it, then that is very cheap motoring. In fact, it's practically free motoring, which is why I called my Porsche book series Practically Free Porsche. If you're interested in making your Porsche experience as practically free as it can be, then by all means, check out my, my Porsche books. I'll put the link in the description below and uh, I think you'll enjoy them. Number seven on the list is the online Porsche community and the Porsche community in general. I've got to say this guys, honestly, I've never met such a, a, a lovely, friendly, generous, um, helpful um, bunch than the, the Porsche community. And I'm not just, you know, I, I, can't, I can't emphasize that uh, enough. They've been so nice and if you're looking to get into a Porsche box, I mean, I would, I would maybe, advise you to have a, to have a look online and, and to visit the various forums, including my own practically free Porsche Facebook group. There's a lot of knowledge and experience on there and guys that are willing to help and, and chat about um, their experiences. It can save you a lot of time, effort and money by by just even having a look at these forums. You don't necessarily have to contribute unless you want to, 
but it's like anything in life, you know, you, you get out of it what you put in and I think it's sometimes worthwhile just saying hello and sharing some photos and things like that and sharing a kind of common interest, you know, and these guys are, are generally passionate post enthusiasts like myself, petrol heads, and they're usually very, very happy to, to help you out in any way that they can. Um, they've certainly helped me out in the past with various things, including using photos and stories, personal stories of, uh, of their experiences, which I've used in, in, in books and things like that as well. Um, but no, I've, I've been impressed time and time again just how helpful these guys are. So you don't have to get too involved, but it, it's, it can be really v valuable if you do. And I've met some, some, some friends through it as well, and um, you know, good, good guys. All Porsche guys are good guys. And Porsche girls too, of course. Number six on the list of reasons why I think you should buy a 987 is partly a bit more general. Um, the internal combustion engine is on its way out. These, these uh, flat six engines are going to be relics at some point in the future. It's hard to picture that just now, but but it's um, it's most likely going to happen at some point. Sad that it is. But you know, cars are all going turbocharged and automatic and eventually electric and then who knows what hydro or something like that or who, who can only guess but the the classic um porsche flat six engine is um is going to be a relic one day like i said so i think if you're wanting that feel and you want to hear that classic or that lovely porsche sound um then obviously you want to try and get one um probably sooner rather than later Boxers and Caymans, like I say, they are going to become a lot different in the future. Um, so that's just another wee reason why if you think about getting yourself a, a 987 Boxster or, or Cayman for that matter, as soon as you can. Any excuse, to be honest. <laughs> Guys, I hope you're enjoying this content and getting some kind of value and insight from it. If you are, would you please uh, hit, uh, like and subscribe to the, the channel for more Porsche related comment. It would help me grow the channel and it would let me understand that people are, are, are getting something from the videos. Thanks, I do appreciate it. Cheers. Number five on the list is the service and uh, the, how easy it is to service and maintain these cars. Um, a lot of guys work on these themselves and they say it's pretty easy. Porsches are easy to work on and you know, so the services and the maintenance can be performed, most of them, by anyone who's fairly competent with, with the spanners, the tools. I'm personally not. I'm, I, don't do, uh, I don't work on these cars mechanically myself. Um, I try some minor things, but generally I like to hand over to my trusted mechanic to do these things. But from what I can tell, the uh, the maintenance of these cars is relatively straightforward. Um, as if you have sort of basic skills, uh, mechanical skills, you can do it yourself fairly easily. Number four on the list is just how easy it is to upgrade and personalise the Porsche Boxster. There's a whole range of aftermarket parts you can buy if you want to make the car more track focused or just to personalise it to your own tastes. You can buy all kinds of things to, to do just that, including different wheels, tyres, combinations. Um, you can put the sports seats in, you can put a sports exhaust on, you can firm up the suspension, um, for, use coilovers or something like that. Exterior-wise, you can change your bumpers, you know, you can add some bits and pieces. Some people will put a, a wrap on these cars to change the colour of it. I personally like the Boxster as it is the standard, but um, you know, some people like to change it a little bit and to make it a little bit more focused and to personalise it a bit. And I guess that adds to a little bit of the fun of the ownership. So yeah, the Boxster 987 platform in particular, I think, lends itself really well to uh, upgrades and to, to personalise the car. Um, and I think that's something you would enjoy doing in your ownership. Number three in my little list is just how well this car performs and handles. If you've never driven a Boxster before, you'll probably be quite surprised by that. The mid-engine configuration gives it absolutely perfect balance. Um, the weight distribution is is it's almost 50-50 actually, it's, it's 49-51 I believe. But um, the way that, that makes the car, the car drive and handle is quite something else and you can take corners in this car um, in ways that you wouldn't think possible. It's quite amazing actually. It's so sure-footed, you feel as though you can drive it almost however way you want and it won't fluster the car, it wouldn't get out of composure. You know, unless you're really trying in a wet road with, say, bald tyres or whatever, I suppose you could get the, the, the back out a little bit. But it's so, um, it, again, it's so sure-footed that you'd need to be trying very, very hard. This car drives and handles superbly. The steering is fantastic. It's, it's pinpoint. The brakes feel fine, firm. You know, it's just the, the cornering, again, is just something that has to be experienced. Um, it drives so well and it feels so solid on the road. It really does inspire confidence and the way the car drives and handles 
is quite special I would say um, and quite unique to the, the Porsche Boxster and again as I mentioned in the previous points I still feel this is quite an analogue drive you know it still feels like almost classic in its feel and solid and everything just feels right in the way it should it's a, it's a fantastic driving tool the Porsche Boxster all Boxsters but the 987 in particular for me is just a really accomplished and precise driving tool Number two on the list, it's just how this car makes you feel, or how it makes me feel in particular. Um, it just makes you feel special. Every single drive is an event, it's an occasion, it never gets boring. Um, it just gives you this lovely feeling just to be inside this car and to own it. There's something really nice about the ownership experience of these cars. You just feel so privileged and you feel as if you've accomplished something. You've worked hard and you've, you've accomplished something by buying your dream car. Um, and that feel is really, really lovely, and it's hard to describe in words um, how that feels. But, you know, all I can say is, I enjoy having this car, I mean, I enjoy even just having this car to look at, to be honest. I look out in the drive and it's sitting there, and I get this week in a warm, fuzzy feeling, um, and I can't wait to get in and drive it. It's kind of like that, you know, Porsche's 987 box in particular, it's kind of like, um, it's almost, this is almost like therapy for me. You know, some people have got their, 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 their vices, whatever it is, and that's fine. For me, and most petrol heads, it's just getting behind the wheel of this Boxster and coming out here in this lovely place out in, in Queensview in Scotland. I mean, I can't remember to see it. I mean, I, I'm out here tonight, roof down, you know, sun shining. This is what the Boxster's all about, and this is what the, the Boxster really does make sense. Um, and I can tell you guys, the way that it makes me feel is just very happy and over the moon to be having this car and enjoying it on a night like tonight. Um, it's a feeling that's hard to beat guys and the 987, I've got to say, makes you feel fantastic. It's certainly the full Porsche experience um, and yeah, I just I love how this car makes me feel. And number one on the list, the most important thing by far in my opinion is something that I call the want it factor. Um, let me explain. I mean, all these points I've mentioned to you previously, all the previous nine points are all very valid and they're all, you know, they're worth considering. But see, at the end of the day, guys, the want it factor overrules everything. If you want something bad enough, be it a Porsche, something else, if you want it, that's the only reason you need to go and buy it. Um, life is short, guys, so, you know, I always say, I mentioned it in my books as well, you know, like, if you really want to do something, if you want something bad enough, then just go ahead and you do it. Uh, the want it factor is all powerful and overrules everything else. That's the reason, that's the main reason and the only reason you need to buy yourself a Porsche Boxster 987 is because you want it. So that said guys, don't delay. Don't delay. Um, why don't you go and buy yourself a Porsche Boxster? You'll thank me later. <laughs> guys, if you're looking for something a lot more in depth, um, something that talks about the history of the Boxster, how, what it's like to own them, all types of boxers and you might want to have a look at my book um, here it is, I've brought the box here, I've got the Porsche Boxster book and the 911 book both are best sellers I'm really happy to say and you know if you're interested in, in Porsches in general I'm sure you get a lot of value from those books they'll certainly help you um, buy your first Porsche or your second or third and it'll also show you how you can stand the best chance of making it a practically free Porsche ownership I'll leave it in the links below, cheers!